want to thank you all for being here. As I look around, I see so many people I have known as neighbors, as prosecutors, as defense lawyers, social workers, activists, organizers, people who have in fact and do in fact make the world a better place every day. And I'm honored that you would show up for this announcement. I am a product of the public schools in St. Louis and also in the Philadelphia area. It was the public schools and my parents who taught me to believe that we're all equal and that equal treatment is the definition of justice. It is my career that taught me to believe that justice also makes us safe. I believe that. 30 years later, I have been a public defender. I've been a federal public defender. I've been a civil rights attorney. I have defended individuals charged with crimes my whole career. And what do I see? Well, in the words of someone standing close to me, what I see is another day of mass incarceration. At the national level, we have the highest percent of incarcerated people of the nations in the world. From the historical perspective, we have more men of color in prison, jail, on probation, or parole than there were in slavery at the start of the Civil War. And are we safe? Well, the answer is we are not safe. We have injustice, and we're not safe. I've watched the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office for my entire career, and the culture around criminal justice has not been justice. This District Attorney's Office has embraced mandatory sentencing, and then bigger, meaner mandatory sentencing, excessive sentencing guidelines, cash bail for poor people, which essentially means people are sentenced at the time of arrest, and they serve that sentence whether or not they are acquitted. This culture in the district attorney's office has cast a very wide net that caught up the poor and that has brought black and brown people from less prosperous neighborhoods into the system when that was in fact unnecessary and destructive. This is a culture in the district attorney's office that has been insensitive and ill-informed on issues of immigration. It has regarded diversion, in other words, keeping people who are facing petty offenses and who are young out of the system. It has considered diversion a joke. I have heard more times than I care to count jokes around the notion that someone is actually innocent. It's also a system that has not treated victims well. They have been inconvenienced unnecessarily they have been manipulated to press for the prosecutor's goals rather than theirs. And very often, they have not been made whole. So what is the solution then? Well, the reason I have decided to announce my intention to run for district attorney of Philadelphia is that I believe justice makes you safer. And how do we achieve that? Well, number one, we need to decarcerate. We need to get people out of jail. Number two. Number two, we need to change our cash bail system. It makes no sense that Philadelphians spend four times longer in jails than other cities. This is an 80% democratic city with a very diverse population and a history of freedom. That makes no sense. We need to work with the Philadelphia Police Department on proactive, intelligence-based criminal enforcement. Now, why do I say that? The statistics show that 6% of criminals commit 60% of serious crimes. That group, those 6%, are the ones who need to be targeted, focused upon, caught, and given appropriate sentences. But that's not what we do now. What we do now is we sweep up poor people, 
people of color in certain neighborhoods, and we do things to all of them as if they were the same as that 6% that wreck their futures and turn them towards crime rather than away from it by labeling them permanently as criminals, as felons, by breaking their relationships with family and breaking their relationships in the community and by sending them to crime school. We need to end that. I will not seek the death penalty. <laughs> Simply put, this is the last northeastern city in the United States that even has it. Little known fact. People act like it's a very controversial position. There's nothing controversial. It's frankly mainstream. This is the last northeastern city in the United States that has a death penalty, and the death penalty is never imposed anyway. So what it really is, is a tremendous waste of resources that can go to making people safe. Court time, money, it is a tremendous waste. It denies victims the closure they need, and I will not be part of it. We need to divert petty crimes. We need to divert first offenders. We need to regard addiction as what it is, a medical issue. That re <laughs> this is a medical issue that requires support. We need to have accuracy in the results in criminal court. Every innocent person incarcerated is also a guilty person who is left out there. Those methods are available. And as a culture, we need to stop fighting the modern methods that are far more accurate. We need to have transparency. All the evidence, all the evidence goes to the defense, not just the evidence that helps, helps the prosecution. These are real solutions. These are, this is how you achieve justice. And this is how justice makes us safe. But in very practical terms, what does it mean? It means this, every time you lock somebody up for a year that didn't have to be, it's gonna cost something close to $40,000. That number is about what it costs for a young teacher to teach for a year in a Philadelphia public school. It's about what it costs for a young social worker or a young police officer engaging in appropriate community policing to do their work. It's also about what the average Philadelphia family works hard to do, often with two people working more than one job. It's about $41,000. So there is a real consequence to taking someone who should be supervised on probation and giving them two years in jail, or taking someone who should be doing two years in jail and giving them five years in jail. The real consequence is that it's unjust and it's unsafe, because all of those kids who would otherwise be in a school are watching that school close. And all of those kids who might have a class size of 20 have to deal with a class size that is much, much larger. These are real solutions. This is how justice makes us safer. Once again, I want to tell you, I'm, I am honored and inspired to see so many people I've known for so long, parents, activists, organizers, prosecutors, ex-prosecutors, laborers, union members, skilled tradespeople. I'm honored that you would come here to be here with me today. So many attorneys who have fought the good fight every day, every day. So, I'm gonna ask you to join me. I want you to work together with me. Some of you are about as good at working together with other people and getting things done as anyone I've ever seen. I'm gonna ask you to work with me to change the culture of this district attorney's office to bring about justice, which will make us safe. Are you with me?
those of you who don't know the incredible work that Mike Lee has done with Mr. Hancock, who's also here, to bring about expungement in Pennsylvania, that's this guy. He's also the chair of my campaign, and he has a few words for you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you all for coming out. And I usually don't make my politics this vocal or known, but I had no choice when I believed so much in the candidate. That's right. If you yeah. believe that the district attorney's office represents us and not a system, I need you to go to that table out front and sign up to collect petitions. If you believe that justice makes us safer, I need you to go out front and sign up to host a fundraiser or other event in your home. And if you believe that Larry Krasner is the person that could bring about a more just and socially equitable Philadelphia, then I need you, most importantly, to talk to your friends and family and remind them of the importance of voting. If you don't vote, you see what you get as a result. So try something new, because we're going to try something new as well together. Thank you very much for coming out.